This week on Lights, Camera Vegas, it's time for takeoff. Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. Let's get to work. Top Gun Maverick finally blasts onto the big screen, and we're talking to the stars about making the long-awaited movie. Then, from reality TV to restaurants, Bill and Juliana Rancic celebrate a tasty new venture in Vegas, and we're sitting down with the couple to get all the dish. I mean, we've always wanted to be in Vegas. Some of the greatest restaurants in the world are here, and we wanted to be part of that club. Plus, it's a new era fans have been so waiting for. Action! Cut! Cut! Sorry. The modern world comes to Downton. The next Downton Abbey adventure arrives in theaters and the cast can't contain their excitement. And a new Lincoln lawyer hits the road and becomes an instant hit on Netflix. We'll introduce you to this hot new Legal Eagle. No objections here. Lights Camera Vegas starts right now. To Lights Camera Vegas, we got the first look at Top Gun at CinemaCon. Now get ready to feel the need, you know, the need for speed as the long awaited Maverick finally hits theaters. And get ready because we talked to the cast about this high soaring sequel. Here we go in three, two, one. First of all, I just want to say that seeing the movie, I mean, you know expectations are high, but more than lived up. I mean, the word I came up with was perfect. It was absolutely oh, perfect. Was this kind of a role of a lifetime for you? Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and Tom, when he would explain it to us as far as being able to, you know, to make this movie, he said, we're trying to hit a bullet with a bullet because I think the, the sweet spot for this to satisfy fans of the original, um, but without, you know, but also making a sequel worthy of, of a film, iconic film that came out, you know, 30 some odd years ago, it is incredibly difficult, but I'm so proud of it. My dad believed in you. I'm not gonna make the same mistake. And you've got to feel so good because, I mean, it's taken him 30 years to do this sequel yeah. and finding Goose's son it, it really matters so much. I mean, and you're basically, you know, Tom's handpicking. I mean, yeah. how did you feel about that whole process and landing this part, which you know is so incredibly sentimental? Well, I wasn't even born when the first one came out. So I used to joke with Tom, I'd say you literally, uh, you know, had to wait my entire life to really <laughs> make sure you could do this thing. But it was, it was, it was really special. I don't think it's even really hit me yet, kind of the, the the shoes that I'm filling and hopefully hopefully being a part of a movie that impacted people the way the first one did. I mean, it's funny because talking to some of the, you know, even Miles and some of the younger actors, they weren't even born when the first movie came out. You know, we were all here. Yeah, like we weren't even born, <laughs> yeah. like we were. Yeah. John's like, I wasn't born either, girl. <laughs> no turning back now. First movie mean to you guys and finally mm -hmm. being a part of it finally coming back to the big screen 30 years later mm -hmm. you know it, it makes me feel like um it makes me feel like i'm part of american history you know so many people consider top gun to just be part of you know our americana you know yeah. it's, it's it's ingrained in us it was every everybody's birthday party everybody's bowling party every like uh soccer team you know uh, team party was Top Gun. You wanted to see Top Gun. You wanted to see it again and again and again and again because it was this really exciting. And to be asked to be a part of it and get to get to play uh, as much of, of of a part in it as I got to was mind-bendingly fun. Who should you piss off this time? Another Admiral. To see you in this movie now, 30 years later, to me just feels like this full circle, perfect casting moment. I think you were just a perfect choice. So I love seeing you part of this family. Thank you, thank you. I was really flattered that they thought of me and so excited to be part of it. Um, and also, speak of full circle moments, I mean, I feel like it was great. It's really, you know, the, Penny Benjamin, my character, is mentioned in the original film. Um, so I think it's really fun that this is, you know, that they meet again. Those are your pilots. 
anything happens to them. Smoke in the air! Smoke in the air! You will never forgive yourself. In working with Tom on this project, was it sentimental on scene shooting some of these iconic moments? It was wonderful. He's he brings all of himself in every moment. You know, there's uh, so much passion for making movies, so much love, so much respect for his fans and audiences. You couldn't ask for more working with someone like that. I mean, it's it's pretty extraordinary. We're going into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. Not even him. I, I don't think anybody uh, can sum up what this movie has meant to both of us and how it's changed both of our lives in such a short amount of time. For me to not be tired of talking about it, for me to be so excited to gift the world what we're about to give yes. them on May 27th, yeah. it's, it's awesome. It, it feels like a weight is lifted off your shoulder. Like I've been living with the secret for so <laughs> long and you do not understand how much that hurts. Like now I can actually like just say, this is what happened. Today's exercise is dog fighting. Two versus one, hey, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> Like, like, I can't even go up a glider plane on a scenic trip to Hawaii without, like, getting, you know, sick up there. How was that training? Was it as intense as we imagine? Yeah, I mean, the training, Tom put together this amazing uh, training program for us. I think we all did about, like, 40 hours or so in, like, th across three different aircraft before we got into the F-18s. Some folks' stomachs really from <laughs> hour one to hour 45. Who's, it's just three of us here. Ah, Bob! <laughs> All right, gentlemen, fight's on. Nice. We actually was, refilmed yeah. one scene because our apparently we were walking with more swagger after we had done a bunch <laughs> yeah. of our flying, and they were like, you guys walk differently. We need to shoot that scene again. <laughs> <laughs> Because listen, before there was Bridgerton, you know, to get hearts racing, back in the day when I was a very young girl, we had the volleyball scene we watched over and over. And I guess now beach volleyball is the new, I mean, beach football is the new volleyball, right? Yeah, yeah. Did, wait, did you see this guy in that scene? Like how ripped, he looked like the freaking Hulk. Uh, there was nobody out of shape in that scene. Yeah, yeah, no. Can I just tell you, the amount of uh, uh, resistance bands and push-ups <laughs> being done on that beach right before we rolled was a lot of male insecurity. A lot that, of male like For my generation of guys, you know, it's a, it's a lot of our favorite movie. So it's, yeah, I, I do feel really proud to be a part of it. And girls too, and not just for the volleyball scene, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it does, no, I think it's, I think it's, they, you, you know, I think it's a film for everybody. Still ahead, the cast of Downton Abbey dishes on how Hugh Bonneville caused some <clears throat> problems on the set. But first, Bill and Juliana Rancic break bread in their new Vegas restaurant or at the grand opening. Hey everybody, I'm John Legend and you're watching Lights, Camera, Vegas with Rachel Smith. Nothing can stop the stars from joining us tonight. She's the red carpet queen. He's the original apprentice. And together, they're one popular and very busy power couple. But instead of just dishing on TV, Bill and Juliana Rancic are also now serving dishes with their growing restaurant business, RPM. And their latest location? Vegas, baby. Long time coming. We're so glad to be here. Yeah. I mean, we've always wanted to be in Vegas. Yeah. We've been looking for the last six years, believe it or not. It's become, it's always been a really good food town. Some of the greatest restaurants in the world are here, and we wanted to be part of that club, I guess you'd say. Yeah, when yeah. we realized 10 years ago when we first launched the very first RPM Italian in Chicago that it was going to be a success, we started thinking about what other cities we wanted to be in. And honestly, Las Vegas has always been at the top of the list. But it was really about finding the perfect location, the right timing. So when I heard that it was going to be uh, at the forum shops at Caesars, I was so excited. I thought, like, it's like legendary, you know, it's pretty incredible to be here. Bill and Juliana hosted a pretty legendary opening night as well, with many of their famous friends hitting Vegas to show support. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was we, fun. Uh, well, we had Taylor Lautner, who's a very good friend of ours, Jason Kennedy, 
Uh, Sheldon Saray, who now lives in Nevada, he's a retired NHL player. We had, we had so many, Dexter yep. Fowler, Cub, I mean, one of the great <laughs> Cubs, won the World Series for the Chicago Cubs. So for me, having him here was uh, awesome. I mean, they're just fun. great people. This is the sixth RPM location, but there's a few dishes you'll only be able to find on the menu here. We have an item that's only going to be here in Vegas. It's the Gargonzola Crusted Wagyu Beef. Um, the beef is from the Neiman Ranch in Harwood, Texas. It's a family owned ranch. Our goal is to over deliver. You know, if we don't over deliver, then we haven't done our job. Yeah, we also have other exclusive dishes to the, the menu here in Vegas, which is the lobster caprese, the burrata caviar. Mm -hmm. But look, I mean, Vegas is a, a world class city, right? Yeah. I mean, people come to Vegas to make memories. Mm -hmm and to have a very extraordinary experience that you can't have anywhere else. And that includes the shows you decide to see, the hotels you decide to stay in, and at the top of that list is where you decide to eat, the restaurants that you choose to spend your time in that weekend or that, you know, those few nights. And so for us, we take that very seriously and we know that people are here for excellent food and an excellent experience and they want to make memories and we're prepared to give that to people. Speaking of extraordinary experiences in Vegas, I had to ask, what are some of their favorite moments? And it's incredible. You know, there's no city like it. It's such a unique city. You know what I love about it is like everyone is in a good mood coming here. Like you know you are going to have fun. You know, you know that you're going with the group you want to have fun with. You guys are going to eat at the restaurants you want to, you know, you're going to have great food at the restaurants that you've chosen to be part of your trip, right? The, you're excited about the hotel, you're excited about the nightlife, you're excited about the shows. You know, we went to see O last night. We brought our son for the first time. We've seen O before, but it's like watching it again, it's like the first time. Oh. There's just something about Las Vegas. You're just in a good mood being here. And you know O will put you in a really good mood? Knowing a major Vegas headliner is already a fan of the restaurant. Lady Gaga is a huge fan of RPM. So oh. I actually had dinner with her one night at RPM Italian in Chicago. Uh, it was pretty well, cool. Well, explain, you were there. I happened to be there. <laughs> Lady Gaga's watching going, Wait, we never had. Well, you she were called there. me over, she goes, oh, and yes, I sat oh, down yes. and had dinner with them. It wasn't a pre-planned dinner, so <laughs> we know her. We know one of her producers, <laughs> who's amazing, and they called me over and like, come sit and join us. So then I sat and had dinner yes, with them, and I called fun. Julian on the phone. It was and, kind yeah. of amazing. I yeah. love Lady um, Gaga, and now Gaga and everyone else can enjoy RPM Italian here in Vegas, where it seems the delicious dishes may also come with a side of celebrity sightings. One thing I know. Success is all about momentum. In court, or you can win, but you gotta believe you can win. But what if you don't? Huh. Then you better fake it till you make it. Hello, Rachel. How are you? I'm doing great. Listen, if someone had told you your next role is gonna be following the footsteps of Matthew McConaughey, one of his most iconic performances, would you be like, yes, Magic Mike, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I see a lot of lawbreakers up in this house. Yes. Right, like a lawyer, less nudity, that's good too. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, definitely, of course. I was uh, very excited. Uh, it, it's an amazing character uh, to be part of this of the world of Michael Connelly, you know, from the books. It's just it's such an honor. Yes, definitely, yeah. No, it's gotta be exciting because when you have like these books that are so beloved, you already, and a movie that was 10 years ago that was such a hit, yeah. you have a built-in fan base. You already know there's gonna be some people showing up and excited to do it, but you're also doing something a little bit different. So is that exciting and kind of challenging at the same time? Yeah, of course, there's that part of you that you're like, okay, I, you don't want to disappoint the fans of the books, you know? You know, you just, we have, we did our take on it, you know? Yeah. So uh, we, I'm just excited to see what, what people think of it. I think it's great. Oh, look at you. I, the smile says everything. I mean, <laughs> this is a great series. It's got a great story and it's not a reboot of the movie. It's kind of like the next chapter, the next book in the series. Yeah. The Lincoln lawyer, is that what they call you? Some do, yes. Why? They work out of my car. But one thing I think people will really appreciate, fans included, is that this is the first time the character is being portrayed in the way that the author and the books imagined. And there's representation this time around, you know, not to discredit the other performances, but that adds another layer, don't you think? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, I was really thankful and re very excited about that, you know, to be Mexican actor to being a lead on a show and, and playing a lawyer. And, you know, when they told me I was gonna do it, I'm like, 
what are you serious i'm gonna be making horror oh, wow so it was really it was really exciting and really thankful you know um you know with the producers with netflix take a chance on that and and explore that side of, of Mickey Holler, which, you know, like you said in the books, is half Mexican, half American. So yeah, very, very thankful. Where are you going? I think better on the road. This city need a little don't ask questions you don't want answers to. You need this just as much as I do. This is your one shot. Since LA is so close to Las Vegas, if Mickey Holler were gonna, you know, get in his Lincoln and drive to Vegas for a weekend, how do you think that Vegas weekend would look? <laughs> Oh man, I think uh, you know he's, he's he's an addict, so I don't think that that would be good. <laughs> when you have a weekend, what do you like to do when you come to Vegas? When I, you know, I've only been been once. A friend of mine got married there, and I've only been once, and I had so much fun. I remember, but uh, it was one of those things that you know is like, wow, it's 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 overwhelming, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta go watch a boxing match. You're fighting a good fight with this new Netflix series, and it's a real big. It's gonna be a huge hit, and just lovely speaking with you, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. Still ahead, what would happen if you took characters of Downton Abbey and dropped them right into Vegas? One roll of the dice. Some hilarious answers next. Have you told them, Lady Grantham? She's told us nothing. Do sit down. I've come into possession of a villa in the south of France. What villa? <laughs> Start at the beginning. Years ago, before you were born, I met a man. They spend a few days together and he gives her a house. You never thought to turn it down? Do I look as if I'd turn down a villa in the south of France? Well, you guys, welcome back. I mean, just doesn't it feel good to reunite like this, not only doing the movie, but doing the press because fans have been waiting for so long for this next chapter. We've been together all these years, which is really nice, but there's also a really nice thing, which is that we've had an audience with us all these years. And yeah. I have to say, man, it, you know, thank you to them. You know, it, it, it really makes a difference. It, it, um, it means so much to us, um, you know, because it's not just us doing this, it's, it's us participating with people who are responding. That's what really gives it energy. A telephone call for you, my lord. Mr. Barber is a producer and director. He wants to make a film at Downton. A moving picture at Downton. But the big old star's famous one. I think it's a horrible idea. Actresses plastered in makeup and actors just plastered. There is something about him, like a wild animal ready to spring. Ready to spring on you, you mean? Action! Cut, cut! Sorry. The modern world comes to Downton. This has got to be so thrilling, not just, I mean, the fan base is so ready for this movie to come out, go back to the world of Downton. What was it like when you guys were back on set that first day and finally reunited? Oh, was so I fun. can't remember. <laughs> just sorry, no, I can. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's thrilling, it's wonderful. It really makes you giddy, jump up and down, hopping giddy. Um, and it's, knowing that you're going to see all the people again and yeah. you know it was it's thrilling you know to do uh, a show or a project should i say now um over that spans over 12 years as an actor is just nothing you ever imagined mm. to to be a possibility even mm. so it's just been yeah it's been the most incredible it's been the most incredible ride yes <laughs> as they say now, was there any like initiation process for, you know, Dominic or Hugh or some of the new actors coming into the movie? Like, you know, did you have to give them a little ribbing? <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't, although Laura said, I mean, I shouldn't really tell Laura's story, but Laura Haddock said that Hugh was a bit naughty. Oh, yeah. Her first... Hugh Bonneville. Hugh Bonneville, her first uh, dinner scene around the, the big dining table. And Hugh said to Laura Haddock, he went, oh, do you know, don't worry, we're very, very relaxed about script and stuff. So if you want to just go off script a bit and make it your own, just do, do a take and just yeah. improvise a bit and go for it. And she was like, really? Oh, OK. Well, I mean, he's saying that's the case. So then she went off script and everything, and then they kind of <laughs> yelled, cut, and were like, what are you doing? No, 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 you stick to the script. So, she was, so he was a bit, yeah, he was naughty with that one. Hugh, I understand though, you have some new cast members joining this adventure and I understand you had a good time giving them a hard time. <laughs> I mean, I, I think we probably said that uh, 
Julian Fellows enjoys a bit of improvisation, which uh, he doesn't. <laughs> doesn't. And um, so I think it was, it was either Hugh Dancy or, or Laura Haddock or one of them said that, um, you know, if, if we're not comfortable with a line, do we, do we, what do we do? Do we, how do we change it? And I said, oh, just, you know, just riff, you know, it's fine. Which of course is not what you do in Downton Abbey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we're off to the Riviera. And with any luck, we'd miss the whole of Mary's frightful film. I do hope that was a prop. You steer ahead. You're the captain now. They better be warned. The British are coming. Not only do you get to film at beautiful Downton, but you guys are so lucky to go and shoot at this gorgeous villa in the south of France. I mean, how magical was that, Elizabeth? Oh, I mean, you tell me. <laughs> it was it was not painful. I mean, for a start, we all felt so lucky just to be leaving the house, let alone going to the south of France with, the, which, with a bunch of people that we would love to have done that with anyway. So, and then on top of that, to get paid for it. I mean, you know, sometimes in life, things just line up. Oh, well, Maggie Smith, I mean, she's always got these famous one-liners and funny phrases, but who is the funniest off screen, behind the screens, who just has one funny phrase after another? Who would you say? Well, there's quite a few. It's quite a few. I mean, we're all capable yeah. of it. Phyllis is one of them. No, 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 Maggie, no. definitely. Yeah, Rob. Rob. Yeah, and 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 Leslie and Leslie, Sophie, Sophie and Jim, Rob, uh, Brendan, Brendan, makes me oh, hurt. Brendan, I know. Jim's fantastic. You know, we could make our own comedy club. Yeah. Actually, stand up comedy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Women like us fall into two categories: dragons and fools. You must make sure they think of you as a dragon. But with that, I will say good night and leave you to discuss my mysterious past. In, you know, this movie, they holiday, the British term, right? Holiday in the south of France. But next season, what if the whole Downton family and crew came to Las Vegas? How would that, how would that vacation look? Ooh, that's that would be pretty good. I'm pretty sure that Robert, my character, would put all of Lady Cora's uh, okay. yeah, inheritance on black. <laughs> you're right, you're right. One roll of the dice. And then Cora's all of a sudden a showgirl for Bugsy, right? <laughs> perfect, perfect. I can see it happening. Downton does Vegas. Now that yeah. would be something yeah, to yeah. say, wouldn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I could see Mrs. Hughes on the on the tables giving it. Oh, yes, yeah. I could oh, see yeah. that. And before I leave you real quickly, any message to fans out there who just have embraced you and loved you for so long and are so excited to see this film? You won't be disappointed. No, and just thank you for keeping us keeping it here for 12 years. And we just really hope you love this movie as much as we loved making it. Absolutely. Well, Thanks. you guys are all superb. Until I see you guys, you know, starting pre-production in Vegas, have a great time. Congrats on this film. We'll see you there. <laughs> thank you so much. All the best. Bye, guys. Bye. It seems the public only want films that talk. I should have thought the best thing about films is that you can't hear them. Be even better if you couldn't see them either. <laughs>《》Fun films to get excited about this summer, and whether it's movies or music, when it comes to entertainment, we've got you covered. You guys, thanks for being with us for another episode of Lights Camera Vegas. Until next time, take care. Bye.